Hello again. Um, it's got a nice little one for you. Um, I picked this one up um, during the last week. It was a eBay auction win. Uh, it's a Fed 2, a uh, Soviet era camera. And it was a colour that attracted me to it. Um, I do already have one. I have an earlier version of the Fed 2. Um, but it's this colour that um, sort of makes this one stand out a little bit. Um, it's not a standard colour, somebody's painted it, although well, I think it looks quite smart. Very cheap, um, I think it was below £20, which is about, what, $30, $35? It's a rangefinder camera, 35mm rangefinder. Like I say, built in the, uh, in the Soviet era. It's a descendant or a very close copy to the, the Leica II. This is the film advance on this side. And this is the shutter release on here, although it's not cocking at the moment because it's set to rewind. This is what this collar does here. So when you advance the, uh, the film, you know, it's the shutter speed rotates, the shutter speed dial rotates. And then you can fire the shutter from here. It's not amazingly quiet. It's not as quiet as a leaf shutter. You can see it's a focal plane shutter in it. But it's very nice. It's mechanical. There's no, no batteries in it at all. Uh, but it's quite a nice little thing, so I thought I'd pick another one of these up. I say this is a later version than the one I've already got. This one has the uh, the self timer on it, so you can uh, wind your film on, set the self timer. There's a little arrow there, so you can put the self timer around, push the button. You can hear the mechanical; it's quite loud. There you go, it trips the shutter. You've got the rangefinder and the viewfinder windows. This is the rangefinder, this is the viewfinder. And it's got quite a wide um, rangefinder gap here. Um, the Leicas, it tends to be quite a bit closer, and this should enable more accurate focusing. I've got a flash sync port on there. A thirtieth of a second is the flash sync speed. Like I said, film advance with a reminder tab. And uh, this is also indexed in the Russian film speed index, the Ghost or Ghost setting on here. Threaded cable release shutter button on there. Um, to rewind the film, you have to push this lever down and twist it. It's a bit fiddly to get to because of this part here. When it's in the down position, you can then rewind your film back across into the canister when you finished it. Put that back there. A shutter speed dial. My other one has the older ones, the sort of the 25th and the 50th uh, shutter speeds, whereas this one has the more modern 30th, 60, 125, etc., up to a 500th. To change them, you lift this up and rotate it. You should only do that after you wound the film on. He says, I've been tried to do it without the film wound on. And then you can change the shutter speed, like so. Also, they say don't turn it between B and 500. So we'll sort of work your way backwards and forwards that way. I quite like the film advance this way rather than the, the thumb operated system. Cold shoe, viewfinder eyepiece. This is this is metal around here, and I wear glasses, so it's something to watch out for that these will scratch your lenses. But you don't really need glasses with one of these because it has got a dioptric adjuster here, so it makes it perfect for uh, getting the the right vision without glasses. So whenever I'm using these, I tend to take my glasses off. And the film rewind, pull up to rewind, doesn't pull up all the way. Very simple, mechanical, very durable. Quite heavy, surprisingly heavy actually. And to open the back, you undo these two catches and the whole back comes off like so. And you can see the pressure plate. And there you can see the, the cloth shutter curtains and you advance. 
you can see the two curtains, curtain one on this side and curtain two. Usual sprockets, take up spool. This is where your film's going to go. And this side does actually come off to make film loading a bit easier. So if you do buy one of these, make sure it comes with this part, otherwise it's uh, no use to you until you get hold of one. And this part on its own can be quite expensive. Got a film, 35mm, the leader as usual. If you've seen any of my videos, this will be familiar to you. Goes in that way. The film curls towards the emulsion, so this is the emulsion size here. Slightly different colour as well. And if you look at this, you'll notice it's got a, a sort of spring claw on there, although this one is quite worn out, actually. And there's also a little hook on there, that you'll notice. And the sort of idea is... This is a direct sort of copy of the 30s way of loading film, is that this hook is going to hook around and into these sp sprockets. And that's what's going to draw the film in. Although that one, I've already torn it. So that should hold the film. And when it goes into the camera, it's going to go in and it's going to go around that way. So I like to just make sure it starts by doing that. You don't need to make the leader any longer, but uh, and this just pushes up onto this shaft here. It just slides up on in there. Make sure you've got the sprocket holes aligned. And then just take up the slack. Now you can just put the back on. Interesting thing with these is there's no foams to go rotten in them. It's like a baffle system for the light ceiling. So they are very well designed. The cameras and the back just slides on. Push the two catches together like so. And then yeah, you've got to advance to get the exposed film out of the way. You can see that's turning. So you know the film's being advanced through the camera. And then manually set the uh, the counter to this little arrow here. You see there it's lined up on zero. So when we wind it on. It's now moved to the number one. It's very simple. Obviously, it needs a lens. This is an M39 um, screw thread. It's like the Leica screw thread, uh, Leica thread mount. So yeah, there's there's no aperture pins because the aperture on these is. Uh, because you're not looking through the lens, you don't need it open all the time. So the lens does stop down. Clickless on this. This is a Jupiter 8 50mm f2. One of my favourite uh, 50mm lenses. And yeah, like most of these lenses, it rangefinder lenses, it focuses down to about three feet or a metre. Depth of field scale on here. Very small, very light. And yeah, this is just a screw mount, so just be careful not to get it cross-threaded. as if we can get it on there at all because I'm looking at the camera screen rather than the, the camera itself there we go it just screws onto there so that's it on quite securely there is a risk of moving this when you're focusing so you have to be a little bit careful with it and just check your settings before you actually take a picture but yeah very nice I don't know if you can actually see through there where the 
yeah you can see the viewfinder patch in there and there's a dioptic adjustment so you just align the two images if you saw my uh, Canon QL17 video yesterday you'll have a rough idea how a rangefinder works it's about superimposing two images straight edges are very useful for making sure things are lined up and therefore in focus but yeah very nice very simple I couldn't resist it it was a color that sort of made me say oh I'm, I want that even though I've already got one but like I say mine is an older one than this it doesn't have the uh, the self timer has the different speeds on it and I also think that the uh, the cold shoe is mounted a bit lower this is this is more level down here so there are different revisions of these so yeah this is a later camera and I just like the color of it, it appeals to me and for less than the price of a roll of film in developing um, I think it was a good buy so there you go folks I had a load and a bit of a quick overview one of my favorite cameras the Fed 2 well, together with the Zorki and the Kievs, I do like the uh, the Soviet era rangefinders. Thank you very much for watching. Comments, questions, queries as usual down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and all that usual YouTube-y sort of stuff. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.